Welcome everyone, Costini here with a battle guide, a very simple battle guide for Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires 4 campaign battles. How do you win a battle where you could just fight a normally like deploy in a formation like this? Like or let's just take the AI. This would be how how the game would deploy my formation. You'd use cavalry on the flanks, artillery and range units behind, lords in the back. And then you attack the enemy. If I were to do this, I could win the battle, but I'd also take significant casualties in the process, and I would not be ready to fight the settlement battle that awaits me. And I can capture a provincial capital very shortly um, after this one if I play my cards right. So instead, what is the best thing to do? Well, first off, there is a terrain feature here where I can prevent myself from being flanked. And I also have all of these units that are pretty disposable. And I have the foot squires, which are not so disposable because they're a tier four unit. So I obviously want to keep them nice and healthy. I also want to take my cavalry uh, as far back as possible, my questing knights and my knights of the realm. But I also want to take Rapunzel. Now I've stopped and I want to position my artillery to have such an arc that can fire across the battlefield. Now, and I've stopped my artillery from firing. Now we're just going to speed this up. And we, what we want to do is take our lord and our hero and get a nice solid blob over here. Of units that we will then charge into. What we really want to do here is get as many enemy units to clump up on my lord as possible. Now, here's the important thing about this. Your lords and your heroes are the ones that can take the most amount of damage. Far above anything else in your army. So if you do this... and this kind of behavior from the AI will usually happen if you're trying to hit high value targets or trying to charge a unit behind another target. It's something you can use very effectively in Scarbrand's campaign. And as you can see, I've clumped all of these guys together. Rapunzel has an ability that reduces the damage uh, she's, um, she's going to take in battle, and there's more units coming in. Now, my lords and my heroes my lord and my hero will obviously take more damage because of this but it's not really something i'm too concerned about the reason i'm not so concerned about it is one um one obviously they can take the damage far better than uh than most of uh, most of the units in this particular army two by clumping them all up together the artillery will do a lot of damage and the artillery will be far more effective for it and that's how I can significantly reduce the damage that my guys are taking. My entire army is taking. Crucially, a lord will also replenish the damage they're taking after a battle far better than any unit in an army. It doesn't matter which faction you're playing. It doesn't matter which army you're playing. This kind of strategy can also work with just ranged units. Because not everyone gets artillery. But a lot of people do get ranged units fairly quickly. Or even in this case, just clumping all of these guys together is obviously something that um, is obviously something that even with a melee army I could use to my advantage. Like right now at this point... At this particular point... Right, I could easily flank these guys with my cavalry and decimate them. Rapunzel and Henry will take a great deal of damage, but as stated, the damage they're taking is manageable. It isn't really going to be an issue for me to survive that level of damage. And now I can just move my, all my guys ahead, keep pounding them with artillery over there, and maybe even get Rapunzel out. Because they are obviously taking a lot of damage there at this point. 
and just cycle charge over there as well. The great thing about Bretonian trebuchets, or just the ability of starting with artillery early on in a campaign. And the army, uh, the enemy army, the skeleton army, is going to collapse. Now, they nerfed this army, by the way. It used to actually be stronger uh, initially in the campaign. They nerfed, uh, I, I think, not necessarily the army composition, but the enemy lord. So he's much, much easier to deal with. And as you can see, the skeletons are crumbling. And as a result of that... I don't even have I, I don't even have to bring my archers in. They're just gonna be really an afterthought. Well, I do kind of want to, but before they end up dying, divide and conquer. And as you can see, the army losses have trick uh, tricked in. The army losses happen when uh, there is a balance of power bar, basically. I can't see it here in this situation, but in every battle, on any difficulty, there is a balance of power. And what that balance of power does is when it tells you in your favor, it just represents your strength versus the enemy's strength. If you kill a lot of the enemy with, while suffering minimal casualties, and this is why this kind of strategy of using your lords and heroes as distractions works so well, if you take very little damage in your army, and the enemy takes a significant amount of damage in theirs, that balance of power was shipped in your favor and eventually caused a morale collapse as it happened there. And this, by the way, what you just saw as a demonstration is precisely the reason Bretonia is one of the best artillery races in the world. Because be. their, their artillery hits like a truck and they get it hit here too. Just a simple idea. So now, with the army that is just victorious, I can go over here and attack the settlement. And I can use a similar tactic in the settlement. Or, if I want to be a bit less hardcore, I could have obviously gone for uh, this element here, which just is tier 1, has a much weaker garrison. But the tactic I just used would work pretty well. Uh, would, would have worked pretty well in that situation. Now, I'm just going to... Um, I should have enabled the vial here, but obviously I'm not really interested in this particular campaign. For him, I am going to get uh, uh, chivalry and also rank up. When it comes to ranking up uh, lords, what you want to get through marcher, inspiring presence. For heroes, you want to start. Uh, for melee he heroes, you want to increase their melee survivability. So for him, I'd probably get hard to hit pretty quickly there. Research-wise, economic investment. Uh, let me just go over a simple siege strategy as well. Because why not? Right, same army. Now first I want to see the layout. This does take a bit of time. Alright, it is a very easy layout. Now, of course, you got to bear in mind that after the amount of damage Rapunz and Henry just took, I'm not going to be able to just use them flat out. But here's the thing about siege battles. And this applies in every siege battle one way or another. Some battle maps, some siege battle maps will have a wall like this where there's no towers. You attack that wall. This is a particularly great situation because this part of the wall is completely undefended. And I have siege, so I'll just be able to punch the uh, a gap, a gate, 
and also use my lord and the hero to uh, to smash down smash down the gate. That will give me openings. I also have some range units, so I can use those to do a lot of damage. Now, the AI is not stationed over there to defend their gate, but they will be soon enough. Now, in an ideal world, you don't attack units that are on the walls, because while the walls don't necessarily offer you the best protection in the world, they will offer the defender some kind of level of protection. What you want to do is this. You want to bait the enemy to attack you. So, they are, the way the AI is scripted is as follows. They're pretty strongly scripted to respond to a movement like this. And they're going to start sending units uh, to defend the wall. Uh, to defend the gate. And that's obviously something you can use to your advantage. And here's the thing. I don't even need to win this particular siege battle in this in this example. All I need to do is do some damage while taking minimal damage on my own. Though, as you can see, the questing knights will certainly do a pretty solid job at winning this on their own. Now we got some zombies. Zombies are not the priority target. Honestly, nothing here is really a priority target. Except like the Grave Guard uh, that are not yet here. Now I'm just gonna send all of these guys in the fray over here. Since I've defeated the Strigos Empire armies, this is the key thing. I don't really care about casualties. I have pretty solid replenishment as Bretonia. And right now I can afford to, to take the damage. That's what's important here. In this particular context. The bats are kind of annoying factor, sure. And we get Black Knights coming in. But we can attack, uh, take them head on. And when units are clumped like this, they are very vulnerable to attacks. Be it charges like so, or artillery and range fire. Now we got more zombies coming in. Let's ch cycle charge them. Garrisons in general are not going to be able to stand up to a proper army. Unless the army itself is pretty weak. Or in a weakened state. And Rapunzel's lovely explosion there certainly is helping my situation. Now, there are still some Grave Guard and some Skeletal Spearmen. Skeletal Warriors. And we cycle charge. This is why I hold Sieges in Contempt. Because they're fucking easy. Because you know the AI is going to try and defend the gates, and they're going to do so in a really stupid way. If you have magic... You wait for the AI to clump up, and then you slaughter them with that magic. If you have artillery, you, you wait for the AI to clump up, and then you slaughter them with the artillery. Pretty simple bullshit. And that's the... Those are the famous Graveguard that I've been waiting for. If I kill them... 
the battle is more or less over. But you can see the AI stupidity there. Okay, so let's end Rapunz. And the army losses have hit kicked in. The battle is won. And there is victory. Now I could sack it. But I might have to come back here again. And then look at how much movement range I had. Though in this case, thankfully, I did have enough movement range to do it. Bertani actually earns a lot more money from sacking than you might necessarily believe. And I'm gonna get free Knight's Errant. Get rid of that. Get some farms improve my archers because I'm going to recruit quite a few of them once I get the ability to do so and get hard to hit. And you can see that Rapunzel is going to heal a lot of the damage that I just took very, very quickly over there. And now I'm in a really good situation yes, in a lot of ways. And there's nothing so fancy the or clever the about anything I just did in these battles. That's why I dislike sieges. That's why anyone telling me that lowering that lowering battle difficulty to easy has some kind of impact. You tell me that was bad. And in point of fact, believe it or not, if I had just auto resolved these battles on easy, I would have actually taken more casualties. I lost like 200 men. Now, sure, you could consider the damage Rapunz and Henry took there as part of that, absolutely. But it it's a re irrelevant damage because it's not affecting my strength ranking necessarily as much and crucially it is damage that I'm going to very very easily recover from so you can either play a campaign and do everything that I just did there again and again and again and siege battle after siege battle after siege battle or you can accept the fact sieges and a lot of these meaning, minor meaningless battles are pointless and embrace the idea that maybe lowering the battle difficulty occasionally, especially at the start of a campaign, is perhaps the better choice. That's just my perspective on that, but this is why I hold sieges in such contempt, because there is nothing to applaud them for. Uh, by the way, a little smart move that I'd recommend here is you may actually want to take Matrek after this particular point. The reason you may want to take Matrek... The, the reason you may want to take Matrek over here... is you can then trade it to the Dwarves. Or so. If I attack the army here... then... I can get... Uh, like one, I can do a lot of. I can eliminate the entire garrison, and I cannot resolve this battle. Though in this case, it is a bit of a stronger army than I could contend with and not resolve. I could fight it manually, or I could just do this and get some replenishment. By attacking our army outside of the settlement, I do get that extra bit of replenishment there that I do so desperately desire. And now I am also going to recruit a prophetess for Lord of Life, get phlegmatic, and get more knights. Though keep in mind she is going to pay a heck of a lot more in terms of upkeep for these units because she doesn't have the vow. Can we get Bretonian vows fixed? Thank you very much, Great Assembly. And get more proficiency there. For him, I'm just going to get chainmail. She speaks and more hard to hit. 
And what I'm going to do is go to the dwarves and sell them my trek for well quite a few benefits. But next turn, because obviously I want to be able, uh, I obviously want to be able to uh, to replenish there after a particular battle. Of course, I could have waited before dealing with Baron Tegan. The benefit is you might be able to capture one artillery piece, though I think you need to attack his army directly to have a chance of doing that. Either way. Yes, ready. What news? I see you. By the lady. And now we can attack that final settlement. I await. Them. Though it is obviously a substantial Repulse enough garrison. And since I have to force march, it's probably in my interest to transfer them over to her. And then not resolve it. And just occupy in this case. Is it time? But also transfer the knights back. Because otherwise, the, the upkeep situation is not going to favor me at all. I serve the lady. And now just start recruiting archers. Pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty doable. My reputation and now just to disband these armies. I will now over here, I don't really care for this army. And I also don't really care for the settlement at this particular point. My strength and wisdom armor the infant. Very well, if you insist. But as all, Cosine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications. Stay tuned for more. After this point, what I do in this campaign is go pay Arkan a visit, then take the Great Desert of Araby, and then march on the Cracked Land. That's how simple it is.